Hello and welcome back to Here We Tow. Today I'm at SMC Motorhomes in Newark and I'm here to film a review of a Frankia. Now Frankia are a German manufacturer and they're not one I've reviewed before and this is actually the most expensive motorhome I've ever reviewed for the channel. So I am expecting big things but the question is will we still find a compromise on a motorhome of this value? Well we'll have a look and we'll find out. So the model I'm going to be looking at today is this. It's the Frankia i 8400 QD Platin. It's their luxury liner. The I is because it is an integrated or A-class motorhome. And we'll go through a few of the facts and figures. So there's actually five layouts all together in this Platin range. We're going to be having a look at a queen bed model, but I will put a link so you can check out all the layouts below to see if there's one that suits you. Now, price-wise, as I say, this is a luxury liner. It starts at £203,000, but this, with the equipment on, is £224,000. Hence, it is the most expensive one I've reviewed. So let's get cracked on and take a closer look. So, the i8400QD, it is based on the Mercedes cab. In terms of the engine, it's a two litre diesel engine. It has 190 horsepower. So that is quite a good amount of horsepower in the motorhome world. And it has an automatic gearbox and that comes as standard. This model here, as we can see, it's actually in the gold color, champagne gold. It is available in white or silver. So you can choose the color that you prefer. As I say, on the Mercedes, now size wise, it is a big motorhome. It's 8.6 meters long. It's 2.3 meters wide, and with optional equipment on, it's going to be 3.2 uh, meters high. Obviously, right now, the satellite dish is up in the air, so it's going to be a lot more than 3.2 meters, but when everything is flat, it's 3.2. So we can see the front, first of all, we've got a nice light cluster here. We've got that big front A-class or integrated motorhome windscreen. The Frankia logo up at the top there, the big Mercedes badge, and this nice black and chrome grille. It does look very nice at the front, and we've also got this black gloss strip here. What we'll do is we'll make our way down the offside first of all. Now this motorhome, with it being so big at 8.6 meters long, it does weigh in at 5,500 kilos. So you will need your C1 category on your license. Payload, you're going to get about 900 kilos once you've added some options. But that's going to depend on what you do add to it. And as I always say, take your motor home to a weigh bridge and find out what it does weigh. So coming down this offside, we've got the driver's cab here. You'll see there's no door. There is a door on the near side, which we'll see. This window does open, so you can see that here. We've got these beautiful like coach-like wing mirrors. These are heated and they are electric. Now coming down, we've got our first locker here, and this is our gas locker. And this will take two 11 kilo gas bottles. Just turn those round. There we go. So you can see in there a large, good size gas locker. If you are going away around Europe, it might be that you use quite a bit of gas. So these larger lockers are always quite useful. We've got another storage compartment more windows and as we come down we've got this big uh, door into the frank here large one piece does have a blind on it and we are also getting an electric step which we can't quite see at the moment because it's down there the motorhome itself comes standard with the two lay wind out canopy this is five and a half meters and you can just see the size of it absolutely huge and it does have the led lighting strip as well as well as that awning uh, light there above the door so continuing down, we can see we've got our Dometic vents for the tower fridge and freezer. That's a winter cover uh, style on there, but just gives you an idea. We've got more storage here. You'll see we've got an external gas point as well for barbecuing outside as demonstrated here. We've got the alloy wheels so standard on the Frank here. We've got another little compartment here. And in there, you can see our toilet cassette and there's two toilet cassettes you get. The other one is stored down here. So you're getting two, uh, which is particularly useful if you are off grid. So that's where you're going to empty the toilet cassette point. Now coming down, I really like this. And one thing I also like is these little uh, sort of twiddling handles, they feel really strong and robust. Sometimes when I review motorhomes, 
you never know which way to twist them and they seem to come quite loose. These are a really simple mechanism to use. I like these. But look at this. If I just open this, we've actually got a rack. So this pulls out. It'll take up to 100 kilos in weight. So this is a fantastic little storage rack for you know, whatever you might want to put on there. And it goes quite deeply into the motorhome as well. So I do like that. Now, moving on, we've got our garage. And this is a very interesting feature. The, the more eagle-eyed amongst you have probably already spotted that the back doors are sort of lifted up, but we'll just start here. So if I just open these, this is going to give us access from the off side into the garage. Now we've got the winder for the awning, we've got these hydraulic struts, and then we've got our first sort of opening into this garage. Now the, uh, the length is 89 centimetres, as you can see, and the height is 114 centimetres. So it gives you an idea of the size here. So if you had like a little scooter or you'd got e-bikes or something, there's plenty of room. And it's got this nice sort of matting on the floor as well. So that's that entrance. I'll just come round this way. Now this is literally, I won't move it because of the plant, but this literally tailgate lifts up as you can see. Again, it's on struts, so it's sort of assisted. So it's not overly heavy, even for you know little people like me. So this is a fantastic um, system. I don't think I've seen this on a motorhome before. Um, and I like this, it gives you loads of access. Again, if you're lifting something big into the, the back of the garage, that is brilliant. And just here, there's just some chocks as well there, um, which, um, you'd maybe not be able to see. On the rear up here, we've got a reversing camera as well. That's part of the sort of um, media package as well as the satellite navigation. Now we'll start making our way around the near side because unfortunately we're a little bit blocked in there. If you're wondering what's on top of the roof of the Frankia i8 400, you're getting a, star a standard uh, in part of the UK pack for 115 watt solar panels so you're getting four solar panels so if you are interested in going off grid you won't have a problem uh, with that and it also comes with a lithium battery as well um, also up on the roof as standard you're going to get um, that satellite dish that we saw and inside there's a 24 inch television but we'll see that inside now this model has also been fitted with the self-leveling uh, self system from E&P. So that system ha has been fitted to this, hence the price. Now coming onto the near side, we've got this door which opens into the cab onto the passenger side. Well, just be careful as I open this. This has got an electric window. It goes into the cab. As you can see, the captain's chair there is swiveled round. We'll have a closer look when we go inside. There are blinds on all of these windows and the cab has an electric drop down blind as well. Now coming down, this is where you're going to fill your diesel tank. Diesel, it's got a 93 litre tank. I don't believe it has that blue. I've certainly not seen that, but that's where you're going to fill that. And this here, we've got an electric hookup point here on the near side. Now coming down, I'll just open this for us. So we've got under here some storage. We've got a little pull out drawer. And then what we've got here, a few features. First of all, we've got, you can see part of the Alderwet central heating system because this motorhome, it does have the Alderwet central heating, the Alder hot water, and we're also going to get a heater exchange as well, which is always very useful and working in conjunction with your solar panels and lithium battery, we've also got a 1700 watt inverter on board. So there's plenty of equipment. Now, some of you might be wondering what all this is about. Um, you can see here this um, great big long pipe. I must admit, when I opened the cupboard myself, I thought, what, what have we got going on here? So this is basically your gray waste tank emptying. Now, on board the Frank here, we've got a 130 litre gray waste tank. That is massive. That's the biggest I've come across. Um, there is a little red handle there. You pull the handle when you're ready to discharge. This actually feeds through the bottom here. There's a hole here in here. It fits in, so you're not getting splash back. If you need to pull it out to reach something a bit further, you've got several meters of this hose. So that's a really handy feature. Um, and it means you're not having to go squabbling about trying to get gray waste pipes out of the garage um, to fit in. Now, as well as that, you've also got, you can see here, a Karcher hose pipe. This is a 15 metre hose pipe. And basically, when you arrive on site and you go to fill your fresh water tank, 
Now your fresh water tank is 270 litres. That is again, the biggest I've come across. 270 litres of fresh water. You take your Karcher hose, attach it. This feeds from here straight into your fresh water tank uh, and Bob's your uncle, you're ready to go. And then you wind it up, as you can see, there is a winder down here and you've filled your tank. So grey waste and fresh water there. Now I'll come down because there's a few more bits to show you. Obviously we've got a window in the lounge area. We've got a window in the kitchen area. We'll see all this inside. We've got the vent here for the alder. This is another little cupboard. I'll just open this. Just another little storage cupboard there so you could put anything in there that you fancied. We've got here, if you were on a service pitch and you want permanent water feed to the motorhome, you have got that here so you can have permanent water on a service pitch you'd obviously need the uh, required attachment a bit further down unfortunately it's a little bit hidden behind the pole but there is an external shower point as well which is just down there so you've got an external shower you've got another locker and you've also got access into the near side of that garage now i do believe if you went to a site where you just need to fill direct feed from a hose pipe into the water tank there is actually um, a way to do that back there in one of those other service lockers so you're not totally reliant on that single hose pipe there right that's the exterior so we've gone through what we're getting here we've gone through what's on our our roof we've gone through our near side our off side so what we'll do next is we'll dive in and have a look at what we're getting inside here so as you can see, literally, as you walk in through that front door, it's, this is beautifully illuminated, looks really nice. So let's go into this area. So as we step in, we've got a panel for our self-leveling system here. We'll go in. Now the flooring, this is sort of a quite um, a light coloured wood. And what we've got here is the leather, which on this one is the cream. I believe there's also grey and there may be other colours, but I'll put a link and have a look. But this one's the cream. So we've got the two big captain's chairs. These are swivelled round. And we've got this beautiful sort of cosy lounge. Now, this motorhome, this has got four travel seats and four berths. The range is available with five travel seats and six berths. So you can, if you're a larger family, um, take more people. Now we'll start at the front. So because this is the integrated or A-class, we see this beautiful big window. The, the blind here, that is electrically operated, so that will come down. We've got this big, big dashboard where uh, obviously the engine's under there. We've got the information panel here. Now on here, you're also getting your satellite navigation. We have got um, cab air conditioning as well from those warmer days. And above me, I've got the drop down bed. And now when this drops down, that is two of our four berths. And this is a good size drop down bed. It's 192 centimetres by 140 centimetres. Right, I'll stand up and start making my way around before I get a little bit too cosy in here because it, uh, it is pretty beautiful. So this, first of all, we've got sort of the L-shaped uh, seating area over there. We can see the table set out. It's actually quite a small table for the size of motorhome. Um, but on this side, we've got this further sort of leather seating area as well. So there's certainly a lot of space to relax, which I think is really quite important um, internally on an evening in the motorhome. There's plenty of storage. We've also got our speaker system here, these lovely little Frankier lights you can see there with that logo. And I'll open these. These are quite a nice clasp. To operate these, it's just literally a push in. So we'll open this first one. So we've got our first storage cupboard here. Again, that's quite high. Our satellite's coming in up there. If I move along, this one's already open, ready just to show you the control panels, but it does have um, a cupboard to close so it, you're not this isn't on show we've got various operations here this way you're going to run your electrics your battery and solar um, the heating you've got your alder control so your main control panel is here above the door as you come in and although this looks like there's quite a lot to operate i'm sure that is pretty straightforward um, you see you've got your music button as well so there's all sorts going on there so i do like that coming round now we've got a little cupboard here I've not tried to open this yet, so there we go. And we've got some glasses here, Frankier glasses. Um, always nice if you, um, you like a little uh, touch of luxury there. Over on the near side, I'll just lean over here. We've got 
similar sort of storage cupboards as well as you can see there so plenty of storage in the front of the um, motorhome what i'll do now is i'll start making my way back into the kitchen area so we'll just do a quick spin around and if by magic here i am now what i'm going to show you is this is the 24 inch television that i spoke about earlier because i said you do get the um, satellite television up there this is your um, 24 inch telly it is on a bracket so you can move that as well then we've got different uh, controls here for the lighting there's a little pull out drawer here for little bits you might want to put like a spice rack or something there now i'll start on the near side of the kitchen there's all sorts of really interesting features here so first of all we can see we've got a little shelf which is sort of shown how we can put things out and then we've got this kitchen area now this is a resin finish and it is quite nice i don't know whether there's different colors available but this is sort of white you lift these up and there's various bits and pieces so here we've got like a, a little caddy bin if you can see there so you've got your bin there the good thing with that is once it's covered over it gives you more worktop space now this is the sink and draining board so again if i just remove those you can see the size that's a good size sink and when you put them back in obviously you can use them as worktop space now this is interesting so if you push this it slides out and you think well why is there a huge gap there one of these pieces i believe it's this one actually slides in there and you've now got additional worktop space so that's a clever use of these covers to make a more use of your kitchen area because motorhome kitchens are not always very large even on a big motorhome like this so i like that idea that's quite innovative and you just push it back in and it clicks back in then we go down we've got a drawer with a cutlery tray there's a couple more drawers there and then we move round. and as we move round, i say we've got the little um sort of shelf here we've got a usb charger we've got a plug socket the window with blind and then we come round and we find the thetford appliance so if i lift this up we've actually got an electric plate and three gas burners as well so ideal whether you're on hookup or off grid we've got a little grill we've got the oven and then just below it i'll open this we've got another pull out drawer as well for bits and pieces and then above we've just got more storage space couple of cupboards there little uh, rack here and then what i like is i'll move on to this side now this is really good because what we're getting in this big cupboard is as well as a good size storage shelf we've got a russell hobbs microwave so we're getting that because sometimes the motorhomes don't come with those so that's good and then we've got the 148 litre Dometic tower fridge freezer. So a really good size fridge freezer there. So if you're away for some time, um, you've got plenty of space in there. So that is great. Moving along, we're getting an, es an espresso coffee machine, if you can see that there. So we're getting coffee machine, if you like your coffee. I'll just slide this out so we can see that there. And these are really nicely finished nice little frosted glass it all feels really solid soft close the coffee machine i'll just be careful with that you can bring that out so you can access it and then lock it back in place and then last but not least more storage as well and as you can maybe see under the floor there's a couple of little um, storage lockers as well for some underfloor storage so the lounge area really spacious and comfy this kitchen i really like this we've got these sunroofs above so we're letting light in we've got plenty of worktop space big um thetford oven uh, grill gas burners all the stuff going on this side um yeah very well equipped right i'll just move back a minute so what i'll do is as you can see there is a door here this is on the off side i'll just close this on you and then you can see that closed so that basically is going to close us off from the front habitation to the rear habitation again you know that is a solid door above me we've got the air conditioning unit so we are getting air conditioning which you would you would probably want if you're certainly going to europe on the near side we find our shower cubicle now i was interested to see whether there'd be any sort of um, 
compromise on this and there isn't this is a good size the glass is clear glass not frosted plenty of headroom well illuminated um, the one thing though that I don't find is somewhere to put my shower gel so you would have to maybe buy something just to stick on, on one of their the sides so the only thing I'm not getting for £224,000 is somewhere to put my shower gel but that is a good size uh, shower and because you've got that huge onboard uh, fresh water tank um, you're not going to have a problem showering right what I'll do is I'm going to show you the toilet area next so we'll just have a little move around so I can show you into there now this is normally where I do find a compromise uh, with motorhomes so we'll close that we've got hooks here for towels or um, dressing gowns we've got a little hook here for hand towels this is a good space so for getting dressed in the morning or after you've showered plenty of space we've got a little sort of soap dispenser a fairly compact sink but that's to make an allowance for the toilet and to be fair if you're washing your face over it there is a little bit of intrusion on this glass but not too much uh, open that one there and I'll just open that one there so you can see the shelving and it looks like there is a, a plug socket just up there as well and let's close those and on that one there so you can see loads of shelving for your toiletries and this is really nicely illuminated we've got the light around the mirror lighting up there plenty of illumination and then we've got a Thetford ceramic toilet so we've got a posh potty um, in this motorhome so Thetford toilet and I'll just go into here we've got a little bin that's a nice touch actually a bathroom bin I don't think I've seen that before so that's nice we've got the um, heated towel rail here part of the Alder system and as I say it is Alder wet central heating and it has got the heater exchange to be fair I think that maybe might be more useful as a toilet roll holder because otherwise there's nowhere to put your loo roll so maybe use that as a loo roll holder perhaps right let me close that and then we'll start moving into the bedroom so I'll I'd say I didn't really find a compromise uh, in there, which that's quite good. So the bedroom. Now, this is this is uh, beautiful. I'll say that. This is absolutely stunning. So we've got, because this is the QD, it's the queen bed. This is a massive bed. This bed is 200 centimetres long and it's um, 160 centimetres wide. So it is massive. We've got that beautiful illuminated headboard up there. The bed obviously drops down for sleeping. It's currently sort of retracted. We've got lighting and a USB charger on both sides of the bed. And then we've got these two little cupboards above and some light switches. I'll just clamber up here in my very ladylike manner. So I'll climb up onto the bed. Now we've got sunroof here. And again, we've got some lighting. Now, when we entered the motorhome we had that lighter flooring and back here we've got the use of these darker woods so this does feel it's quite boutique -y really I like this um, in it, but it doesn't feel it feels quite soft and warm in in this room but I can see the darker wood could maybe darken it hence they probably put these extra lights in we've got some lovely strip lighting here we are getting blinds fly screens and proper blinds these uh, nets these are actually weighted as well so these are they'll hang straight these are nice these just soften it up behind me is a little bit of wardrobe space so you can see there it is illuminated and when I pull it I don't know if you can see it actually pulls the rack forward so you're not having to try and fight into the back of the wardrobe and there's obviously a little bit of space down there at the bottom so if you can sort of see that motion so that's a nice feature these are the little lights that I was talking about with a, a USB as well. So that's this side. I'll just move around. We do also have here, if you want television in the bedroom, you can uh, plug in here, as you can see. We've got a little cupboard for storage just under there. And then just step down. There's the button for the electric bed. I'll just do a little movement. You can, it goes up and it goes down. And that's a nice feature because um, our motorhome bed, um, you actually have to physically pull it yourself, which I find that quite hard. Whereas that does it for you electrically. So that is nice. Um, coming around, you can see we've got another wardrobe on the near side. And I'll just show you this privacy screen. 
because this is really chunky and as you pull it out it goes I'll just move this way all the way across I'll just I'll just bring it back now so it's going to separate again these different parts of the motorhome it does clip back for when you're driving and then I'll just pull this out I'll just do this one as well and then we've got some more storage racks as well um, so you could put various bits on there maybe towels or something like that you could put what you want there couldn't you really um, but yeah beautiful so that's the bed say massive 200 centimeters by 160 centimeters plenty of storage uh, alder uh, towel rail come radiator again uh, plenty of room here no compromise really in there the only thing I'm not getting in there is there somewhere to put my shower gel but otherwise that's a really good size and then we move back we've got this really good uh, kitchen I'll just swivel past you really good kitchen with these sort of innovations such as the extra worktop space that coffee machine the microwave we've got the satellite system we've got uh, four 115 watt solar panels we've got an inverter we, this motorhome is going to be excellent off grid or on grid it really is so what have I got to say about it £224,000 the most expensive motorhome I've ever reviewed um, yeah it's pretty stunning I, I've got to be honest I've not really found anything here that I would say lets this down or that it doesn't explain why it costs what it does it's incredibly well built it's German manufacturing um, right let's dive out and just have one more look at the front of it and we'll summarize so follow me there we go so that is the Frankia i8400 QD platin luxury liner um, and it is absolutely stunning if you're looking at something that's obviously 8.6 meters or bigger because there is an even bigger one then uh, put it on your list I will put a link in the description below so you can look at all the different layouts because there's not just the island bed there are um, longitudinal beds as well as some other layouts including a lounge as well in the rear so I'll put a link you can have a look thank you to SMC motorhomes for letting me come today and have free reign to have a look at this stunning motorhome I really appreciate it um, SMC will be at the NEC in February and October. They have a stand there with Frank here. So if you want to have a closer look at these in person, you can do that there. Uh, but I've, uh, I've really enjoyed having a look at that. That's been brilliant. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.